So it's the middle of September 2022 and I've travelled down to Worthing on the south coast of the UK to see Bowers and Wilkins. And I was here about this time last year. I got to tour the factory and see firsthand the brand new 800 series of speakers being made. It's a fascinating experience and I've already created a video for this and I'll link it up there for you. But I'm here this time to learn about and listen to the brand new 700 range of speakers, 700 Series 3. And I've spent the day here and I've got to look at and listen to the full range. So from 707S3 all the way up to 702S3. I also got to hear a full home cinema system, a Dolby Atmos home cinema system for the new 700 range. And the centre speaker, the flagship centre speaker... It's really very interesting, especially compared to the previous model. I'll tell you all about that in this video too. And I also got to listen to and look at a brand new Philips OLED television with a Bowers and Wilkins speaker system or sound system built into that as well. So it's been a fascinating day. I've got as much of it on camera for you. I'm gonna explain and talk about all the new 700 speakers in as much detail as I can, plus all the other bits and pieces. So yeah, hope you enjoy the video. The 700 series is an extremely important range of speakers for Bowers and Wilkins, and they are intended to offer as much of the flagship 800 series sound quality as possible for not only more affordable price points, but also from a form factor that is more traditional for a domestic speaker. And as a result, it's a speaker range with a very wide appeal. Now it's important to consider this was a press event, so I wasn't the only person there. So my experience was a little like a hi-fi show in that it's an unfamiliar listening situation with someone else always being in the best seat. So take this into account for my opinions on sound quality, and this was just some impressions, not a review of course. Starting with the 707S3, the small speaker that could. These were demonstrated to show that even though they are small, they can deliver a large and punchy room filling sound. And that is exactly what they did. They were working quite hard to do so, but I don't think they sounded strained in the process. Interestingly, the 707 are designed with actual bookshelf placement in mind, rather than stand mounts. Obviously, you can do both, but if you want 700 speakers for a bookshelf, these will do it for you. Then stepping up to the larger 706S3 was for me at least just a case of more of the same. So a larger sound with more bass that was delivered with more grace. And for a room this size, I think the 706 would be the smallest speaker I would ever really want to go to without a subwoofer. Both the 707 and 706 had a nice airy soundstage with good detail and nice vocal tonality and bass with some punch. And both did sound very nice, but when stepping up again to the 705S3 that features the tweeter on top, you could instantly hear the effect of the tweeter being there and how much more open and spacious the sound is presented. The sounds between the speaker become more three-dimensional and there is more clearly presented sounds to the outside of the speakers too. So overall, a much larger sound with more refinement again. And this is interesting because the 706 and 705 are very similar size, but the 705 sounds quite noticeably like the larger speaker. Then to add some extra value to this set of demos, we were given an AB listening comparison between the 705S2 and the new 705S3. I think the S2 sounded a little warmer in the mids from where I was sitting at least, but at the same time it sounded thicker and flatter and less open and less three dimensional. Like there was more in the way of you hearing the deeper expression of the music. And this was only a quick AB, but it showed me the route Bowers have taken with this new 700 range. To listen to the three different floor standing speakers, we moved to a larger room with very different acoustics and a different acoustic treatment strategy to the room. And the demo started with the 704S3, the smallest of the floor standers. And to my surprise, they did a great job filling the larger room with sound without sounding overworked. And for me, the 704S3 sounded like a larger and grounder sounding 706S3 with more scale and more bass, but with the same sonic tonality and traits. So a nice sounding speaker with a good soundstage and good clarity. 
But next up, I think was the biggest difference of the day by quite a long way. And from this demo, I would say, I think this is the sweet spot speaker, the 703 S3. And for the first time, the 703 gets the tweeter on top. The 703 S3 sounded huge by comparison to the 704, in terms of how wide and open the soundstage they created was. It was very much take you back as an improvement, and again shows why Bowers put the tweeter on top and what that allows their speakers to do. They're normally going up to the flagship speaker of a range you would expect the most improvement. And there still was some going from 703 to 702 for the scale, more bass, and graciousness of the sound. But the 703 had, for me at least, set the bar precedent that much higher already. And then to compound this, Bowers did a demo between the 703 S2 and the 703 S3. With the S3 having the tweeter on top and other improvements, it sounded much, much better for openness, clarity, and soundstage three dimensionality. And again, this AB demo really showed me how Bowers have taken the 700 range forward. So overall, this was only a short and sweet demo session really for any of the speakers individually. But as a whole, listening to them back to back with some S2 versus S3 comparisons, it was really very informative and powerful for presenting the message of what the 700 S3 range is all about for sound. More space, more openness, more clarity, more like the new 800. So what is new and has been improved with the 700 S3 speakers? Well, I think initially you could look at the S2 speakers and then look at the S3 and you might not initially see much difference. So it was great to be able to get my hands on all of the individual component parts to see just how much has changed. And let's start with an obvious one, the tweeter on top. Here is the S2 tweeter housing. Now this is the S3 tweeter housing, and as you can see, it's larger with the S3, much larger actually, and it has the same anodized type of finish as the 800 series, and a similar dual contact point connection system. And the S3 tweeter housing is not as large as the 800 range as it would hang off the back of the speaker, but it's still larger or longer and much closer to the 800 diamond tweeter in terms of form and function. And this is also carried over with the tweeters used in the 707, 706 and 704 that's mounted inside the speaker. You can see the tube behind is much longer with the S3 than with the S2. And on the front, the tweeter grille has more space or less grille with the S3 compared to the S2, so less in the way of the tweeter. And all the 700 tweeters have improved the voice coils and improved magnets, and Bowers say the S3 tweeters sound sweeter. What's not changed is the tweeter diaphragm itself. That is still the same carbon dome tweeter as used in the S2 range. In a similar vein, the S3 range keeps the same continuum material FST mid-range driver as the S2, but incorporates the biometric suspension system of the 800 series. So when you hold the mid-range driver in your hands and rotate it to look behind the driver, it seems like there is something missing. There is usually the yellow spider suspension system that we see on 99.9% .9 of speaker drivers. Bauer's patented biometric suspension is designed to significantly reduce distortion and was a big upgrade to the recent 800 Diamond 4 range. So to get pretty much the same driver in the 700 series is very cool and I think explains a lot of what I heard as a difference between the S3 and S2 speakers. Seeing the biometric suspension in isolation, it doesn't look like much, but this is a pretty major advancement for speaker driver design that's limited to mid-range use at the moment. So it's only used in the 704, 703 and 702 speakers, the speakers that feature the FST dedicated mid-range driver. 
The base and mid-base drivers will look familiar to some as they are very similar to the drivers used in the S2 range, but with some improvements to performance. And I think it's just cool to see them out of the speaker and turning the driver around, you can see the spider used here and how different it is compared to the FST mid-range driver with the biometric suspension. But what of course you can't see on camera is how heavy the driver is, and this is a pretty substantial unit. Another cue from the 800 range is all of the 700 S3 speakers now have curved fronts to the cabinets and thicker front baffles. And this is combined with a slightly narrower width profile. The curved baffle means all of the mid-range and base drivers are installed into what Bowers call pods. So the drivers sit slightly forward of the cabinet baffle, similar to the 800 range. Bowers say this helps their sound to be more free of the cabinet as the driver is further away from the baffle. And it's a subtle difference to the eye, but once you see and hear it, you can never unsee or unhear it. And I always love to hold passive crossovers in my hands because they are big brutish things that are so important to a speaker's performance. And there has been some improvements here between the S2 and S3. And I was only shown the 702 crossovers, which gets more heat sinking for the mid-range driver so it can perform better. And there is also more space between the components on the LF crossover as the board is larger. But I did think it was cool to see Mundorf Evo silver gold capacitors being used. And there are many other changes too, such as with the plinth designs, with the ports being larger. The 702 is now down firing, which is a big change. The S3 range has better quality cable terminals and a better design for the spikes. And I'm sure there are other technical improvements that I missed, but I didn't miss the big cosmetic change of the new finish called Mocha, which no surprise is a medium brown, quite rich wood color. And I think it's a nice alternative to the white, black and rose wood. In the afternoon, we were given a full new 700 series home cinema demo to show a few things. One being how well the 700 series in ceiling or in wall speakers match for Tombra with the new 700 and how cohesive an overall sound stage could sound. And this was very cool to experience. I think the bigger news here for home cinema fans is there is at last a new center speaker design that features the tweeter on top. The HTM71 S3 has been made slimmer overall, so having the tweeter on top doesn't make the speaker crazy tall. And when you look at the S2 center speaker, it's quite a chunky beast anyway because of the driver array. And I think it's a nicer, more elegant solution to have the tweeter mounted on the top of a slimmer speaker. And of course, you also get the sound benefits of this too. I think they call that a win-win. And lastly, we were given a demo of a new Philips OLED television with a sound by Bowers & Wilkins Dolby Atmos speaker system. And there is an in-joke as to whether this is a speaker system or a sound bar. Bowers' Andy Kerr says it's a speaker system as all the electronics are built into the TV. So the speaker is all speaker. And there is an umbilical cable connecting the two. We watched a little bit of the new June movie and the sound was loud, clear, crisp and immersive. Incredible really for a TV sound. And for me, it was only really lacking some sub bass to sound really great. What's cool is you have controls in the TV to calibrate the levels of all of the individual drivers in the speaker. So you can turn up or down the up firing Atmos drivers, or you can turn up or down the side firing surround drivers, which is cool because you can tweak the sound to your room. And then there is an option to add a subwoofer. And for a lot of people, I can see this being more than good enough for movie night thrills. And that concluded my day at Bowers and Wilkins. And such concludes this video. So I hope you found it interesting, especially to see the inner workings of the new 700 S3 range and some of the new and improved component parts. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, well then subscribe. Thanks very much to Bowers and Wilkins for the invitation. And thanks to you all for watching. I will see you all soon.